yeah that edge is actually holding up pretty well i've been using this quite a bit around the homestead just for uh like homesteading chores and things like that it's working out pretty well i may need to put a new edge on it here pretty soon but otherwise it's looking pretty good oh hey guys i didn't see you come in come on in pull up a stool i was actually just thinking about you i wanted to uh run this past you here. I've come up with a list over the last 48 hours or so of just things that my wife and I, skills that my wife and I have tried to work on over the past couple of decades. And the reason I'm doing this is because, you know, a lot of people are now coming in to the prepping community that were never preppers before. So we've got a whole bunch of new people that are coming into the fold and that's great news. The only problem is, is that they may not know a lot of this stuff. You know, YouTube only recommends videos that are the newest one. They don't recommend your older videos. So uh, I've talked about some of this stuff in different videos, but this one here is just going to be all about 10 SHTF skills or survival skills that will save your life during SHTF. The, the collapse of everything is imminent now. It's coming. We feel it. We see it. That's why more people are waking up and coming into the prepper community. So let's get into this. I want to try to go through it kind of quickly here, uh, but I've got a list of 10 things, 10 skills that you need to be honing in on right now while we still have internet, while we still have the ability to go out and, and talk to other people that could probably show you a lot of these skills. So number one here on the list, hunting, fishing, and trapping. Uh, most people that were, you know, grew up in the country, they grew up around people that knew all about this, whether that be hunting squirrel or deer or rabbit or whatever. You know, there's just, depending on your area, you might be in an area where you have uh, moose or elk or things like that. Then if that's the case, you're going to need, you know, larger equipment to hunt those, hunt those things, obviously. But, you know, you got to kind of know your region and know what kind of animals are around. Uh, but it would be a really great idea right now while we still have internet and while we still have YouTube Go in there learn every single thing you can about hunting and fishing and trapping uh, I grew up fishing. I'm not a big hunter. I've honestly I've never hunted anything in my life But I've watched a ton of videos on YouTube that kind of give me the pointers and basically the, the rough idea of what I need to do I, I understand the concepts and the theories and all this stuff, but I'm more of a fisherman uh, Trapping, I've never done any trapping, but I have made like some different uh, slip knot type traps out of old guitar strings and different pieces of wire and things like that. I've never actually used them, but there are lots of different videos on YouTube about how to make deadfalls and other traps that you can make out of materials that are available right out in nature if you know how to do it, if you know where to put the notches and different things like that. So I highly advise you, number one is a huge one, hunting, fishing, and trapping. Learn it, learn it now. Number two, foraging wild edibles. Now, uh, you know, you gotta be careful with this one. This one can get you killed. If you pick the wrong mushroom or you pick the wrong, you know, grass that you think is something else and you try to eat it, it could kill you. So you need to be very well informed on this one. Uh, you know, some of the common ones that grow nationwide, coast to coast, are like dandelions. Those are safe. Now, you're not going to get a full belly probably off just picking and eating dandelions, but it is something to keep in mind. Uh, in my area here, we have morel mushrooms uh, in the spring. Uh, we have uh, just other wild edibles like uh, uh, sand plums. We have sand plums. We have persimmons. Uh, let's see what else I'm trying to think of. Uh, lots of different things cattails even uh, i mean there's just tons of things prickly pear cactus there's lots of different things that you may not be looking at right now as a food source but knowing how to locate and process and use these items are going to be paramount to your survival so foraging wild edibles i highly recommend you get a book that's regional to your area and that will tell you someone else has already done all the work and they've gone out and put pictures and things like that in there in this book and that would be a great book to have either in your bug out bag or definitely uh, close by where you could grab it if you had to bug out you'd certainly want to take a wild edible foraging book with you it plant identification is going to be critical paramount I mean again it could be deadly so don't don't just go out there and assume that it's the, the right plant make sure you know all of the markers and identifiers to make sure you don't poison yourself because the whole idea is to be able to stay alive right we don't want to end up getting sick or getting dysentery or something like that uh, that would just wreck you in an off-grid survival situation. So next up, number three, you're gonna need to know how to process and prepare all of that wild food we've been talking about. So whether that be foraging wild edibles, you need to know the different processes. Uh, there's, a, there's a plant around here and it's called poke salad. And it sounds like salad, but it's salet. 
It's poke salad. Now there's a way to boil that stuff like three times and it makes it edible. I've never personally edit, uh, ate the stuff myself, but uh, people that I talk to, uh, they say it's pretty good. Now, you know, knowing how to identify that and knowing how to, and why you need to boil it three times is the important thing. Uh, but also like processing the meats and stuff. You know, rabbits is one of the easiest ones uh, from, my little experience in that realm. And we've got some rabbits here. We're raising uh, backyard rabbits now. So here pretty soon I'll be, you know, butchering a lot of rabbits and I'll probably know pretty well how to do that uh, after I do two or three of them, right? Uh, but it's not just processing, it's, it's using and utilizing every part of the animal that you can. So if that's a, you know, if it's a big buck, maybe you could use the antlers for making other tools and things like that. Uh, you know, just every part, the bones, the bone marrow, uh, there's a lot of nutrients packed into that bone marrow. And if you're in a SHTF situation, you need to know how to get that out of there and process that. Uh, you know, it could just be as simple as making up uh, bone broth, bone stock and stuff like that. So try to get as much use as you can out of it. If you can, if you can tan the fur, uh, that can make some really good clothing in the future, uh, when the winter time comes around or maybe some blankets and different things like that. So all really important stuff for you guys to know and learn right now while we have internet. Uh, it's pretty easy to go on there and type any of this stuff in, you know, how to process a deer, right? Or how to process a rabbit. And depending on which video you draw, you'll, you may get one where it's a more of a traditional old style, uh, using old tools, you know, all hand tools, uh, nothing electric because you don't want to depend on that in case the grid does collapse. So moving on here, and this is a huge one. I thought about putting this as number one because it's the most important thing. Without this, nothing else matters. Water. And I know you're thinking, oh man, there's water. It's flowing out of the tap right now. Hell, there's a stream down there. I can just, well, you got to know if it's safe, if that stream down the road is safe for you to drink, uh, just know how to locate and collect water. Uh, having, you know, containers and vessels and different things that you can put the water in that you are collecting and carrying water. Uh, you know, our forefathers knew a lot more about this than we do. Almost everybody out in the country around me has a well and the people that are closer into town, they're on city water. So they never have to go down to the creek and grab a five gallon bucket of water and carry it back up to the house. But let me tell you something that involves a ton of energy and burning calories to do that sort of work. That's hard, hard work. So you want to think about your water plan now and have that all worked out. You need to know how to locate and collect water and you need to know how to uh, filter and purify that water. Uh, if you don't know those things, you ain't going to make it very long because I guarantee you, if you just go down to most of the streams here in the United States, if you just go down to the stream and you drink it, you're going to end up getting some kind of dysentery or water bug that's going to cause you to have dysentery. And that's going to screw you up because you know, you're trying to keep food down. You're trying to keep all this precious food. That's going to be hard to come by in your body. And if you go and do something silly, like drinking unpurified, unfiltered stream water, uh, you're going to end up throwing all that up or, or putting it out the backside. So not a good thing. Have your water plan worked out right now. Number four is critical. It may be the most important. If I was just starting out, it'd be the first thing that I worked on. It'd be the first thing I worked on out of this entire list. And then you can do, do whatever you want with the rest of the list. Number five, this is going to be another one that's just crucial that people don't think about. We take it for granted because we have Bic lighters and Zippo lighters and stuff like that. But fire building, you need to know how to build fires and you need to know how to build them once that Zippo or that Bic runs out of fuel, right? I mean, so you need to know about friction fires. You need to know about how to use flint and steel. You need to know about using uh, ferro rods and things like that and stock up on those items right now. But don't just stock up on them and put them in your closet somewhere. Stock up on them and you force yourself to use them. Like when you go camping or something like that, build a fire the traditional way just to practice that, just to practice that skill, knowing which woods to go get for a friction fire or a bow fire, anything like that. That's going to be critical knowledge to have right now before the SHTF goes down. Uh, in my area, willow is supposed to be one of the trees that's really good for that. Uh, cedar is another one uh, as a fire starting tool. So just look into these different woods and which ones are going to work well for you, which ones aren't. Obviously, a piece of freshly cut green wood is going to be so full of moisture, it's not going to work out for friction fires. You're going to need some dried out wood for that to start with. So know your area, know your tree species, uh, know how to find the woods that you're going to need to make friction fires and also have other things, you know, that are easier like flint and steel and ferro rods, because those are going to be critical to your survival. 
it may not seem like it right now. If you're in a state like I am, I mean, it's like 105 degrees today. So the last thing you're thinking about is starting a fire. But boy, when that cold winter wind blows and it's, you know, 12 degrees outside, you're going to really wish that you had fire building skills. So it's not just the actual starting the fire. It's also knowing how to have the right kind of uh, uh, tinder and things like that and the right kind the way to actually build a fire up and how to keep a fire going These are all very important things. So learn it now while the internet's hot uh, number six mechanical skills and as you know if you follow the channel I work on almost all of my own stuff I mean, I can't think of the last time I actually had to take something to someone and pay them to work on it uh, I'd probably be in for a heck of a, sh a sticker shock if I did have to go pay someone for something. But knowing mechanical skills, like being able to work on your own vehicles, being able to work on and repair your own generator. So you got to have a little bit of electrical knowledge. It's, it's sort of a, you need, to, you need to be a jack of all trades, not necessarily a master of any, but you need to know how to like MacGyver things and use uh, non-typical repair parts to repair typical equipment, you know? So... Maybe something happens and you need a certain gasket for a carburetor or something like that. Well, let's say there are no gaskets around. If you've got a sheet of that gasket material, you can trace it and make your own gasket. So these are just things that you need to know how to do right now. You need to have the tools. You don't need all of these tools, but you need to have the tools and the knowledge to do all your own re repairs and things. So that includes like carpentry and, you know, uh, just so many things electrical plumbing things like that that you may not be able to get a plumber in there you know uh, shelter building that's a really important one knowing how if something happens and you have to bug out into the woods or something knowing how and what kind of materials it's going to take to build yourself a, sur a survival shelter that'll at least get you through the winter i mean in the summertime it's a little easier to get around that but in the winter time you're certainly going to need a roof over your head and if you're in your own homestead your house or whatever you need to know how to keep that dry inside of there so if something happens a big hailstorm happens or a tree falls into your house or a limb or something and it pokes a hole in your roof you need to have the supplies and the knowledge to get up there and patch that hole up because somebody else might not be coming so these are things you need to think about i mean right now do this stuff now learn about this stuff now because there ain't going to be a youtube at some certain at a certain point there just won't be any internet left i just i think that's going to be the the kill switch when they hit it all and they turn it all off uh that's when we'll know the collapse is certainly underway and then we won't be able to communicate like this so i hope that these things are giving you at least a good starting point number seven basic first aid and supplies so you need to know how to patch up yourself you need to know how to clean a wound you need to know how to do the basic things and you know that i'm kind of including like hygiene and stuff like that in this group as well so you, you know you need to take good care of yourself because if you don't uh you know skin infections and other things like that just from being dirty can happen rashes other things that can actually uh, be debil debilitating. They can put you out of the game if you've got a burned out crotch because you're you know you weren't you weren't cleaning yourself well enough and you've got like a heat rash or something in your crotch. Trust me. Uh, I, like I said, I live in a hot state, so every year I kind of go through a transition, and it's not because of lack of cleanliness. It's just it's just a fact that you know when you go from wintertime skin uh, and it's transitioning into summer skin, there's a time when your your legs will get kind of burned out uh, in your crotch area, and man, that can that can really that can really affect you. It can it can limit the amount of work you're able to get done. So having some basic you know knowledge of first aid and hygiene and having the supplies that you need like the cortisones the creams the baby powders the other things the soaps the shampoos things like that are all going to be really critical but this video is more about the skills side of thing so you're certainly going to want to have basic first aid uh, skills and supplies for one thing if the person next to you didn't do that uh, your neighbor or something and they need your help uh, you could use those skills as a bartering item uh, you might be able to go down, like in my local area, you can find places where you could go take like a basic first aid course. Uh, oftentimes it's free. If not, look into your local community colleges. You may be able to find a place where you can go take like a basic first aid class, and that would just give you some good ideas. If not, you could go on to YouTube or any of these other sites and probably learn everything that you could there at the school. Uh, you're just going to have to use your own discretion. Number eight, and this is a really important one self-defense and i know immediately you're thinking guns and knives and all this stuff and that's true that's part of it but the other part of that is hand-to-hand -hand combat so 
you can't just focus on weapons. You got to have some hand to hand combat, at least. I'm not saying you got to be the ultimate UFC fighter or anything like that. I mean, I'm a, I'm a 46 year old man, so I'm not going to ever qualify for that. Uh, just in the state that I'm in, in my life and things like that, that would never happen for me. But I do have enough self-defense fighting skills and things like that to where if I had to defend myself, I think I could do a pretty good job. I mean, again, you know, you put me up against a 25 year old that's in the peak physical condition of their, of their life, then more than likely they're going to win but I'm not gonna make it easy for them. So increase your self-defense skills. I mean, obviously weapons, guns, knives, things like that, spears, different things are gonna be super important. But I think a lot of people, a lot of preppers just totally overlook or they overcompensate because they have that Glock and they got those 33 round mags over there and they think, oh yeah, I'm good to go. Well, the problem is, is you know, guns jam, you run out of ammo, things happen, you get caught off guard, your gun's way over there, the bad guy's coming through the door right here. You need to be able to defend yourself. So one of the things that I've done in the past is I've rented some videos from the library and uh, I'm not saying I'm an expert or any by any means, but I've studied a little bit of the Krav Maga. I really like the Krav Maga fighting style. Uh, it's usually pretty well catered to people like myself that aren't professional fighters. So you can do different things with just, just look into some different fighting styles and things like that. I really like the Krav Maga. It's pretty easy to at least learn the concepts of. So I'm not gonna say it's easy to do because none of this stuff is easy to do, but it's easy to learn the concepts of. Uh, so moving on, number nine. This is another really important one that I don't think a lot of people uh, really pay attention to right now. It's situational awareness knowing your surrounding. I mean, I go into places all the time and I can just see people are just like zombies. They're just like, they're just zombified. They're just staring straight ahead. They don't make eye contact with anyone. I am not like that. When I go into a room, I'm like scanning. You know, I imagine that, you know, people that didn't know me might think I'm a police officer or something like that, or a military guy, because I go in and I scan the room and I look for the place. You know, if I can find a place where I'm sitting in the corner and I'm my back's against the corner and I'm facing the, the entry, that's kind of the way I like to go because you never know uh, when somebody's gonna bust in and start doing a shoot 'em up. You know, I mean, there's lots of crazy people out there uh, these days that are either off or on their psychotropic meds and, uh, you know, like the Uvalde thing, they could just come into the restaurant or whatever public place you're sitting at and and mow a whole bunch of people down. But if you have your back in the corner and you're looking out toward the door, toward the exit, right, that gives you an advantage because you're always, you know, just keep your head on a swivel. That's the best way to summarize that one. Situational awareness, keep your head on a swivel. Know what's going on around you. And I think you guys will attest to this. Many, many people out in the public just act like they're in a, in la la land. They don't, they don't really seem too worried about anything. And I think that's why a lot of these Uvalde and like the, the shooting up there in the supermarket, I think that's why this stuff happens is because people are all in their own world. And most of the world that they're in is that staring at the cell phone like this world with their head down. And so what that's doing is making, making them easy targets, easy victims. So don't be that, don't be an easy target or an easy victim. And that right there will help you in just your day-to-day -day living all around before SHTF, but especially after SHTF happens, uh, you need to switch your philosophy to basically trust no one. Unless they're in your household, in your group, trust no one. Give, give no one the benefit of the doubt. Assume everyone is coming to take your things away from you because once shit hits the fan, that's, that's what I foresee happening. There's not gonna be a lot of, uh, friendly exchanges and stuff like that. There's gonna be people that you would have never expected trying to steal your stuff from you or kill you, to, to, to steal your stuff or to steal your place, to get a better position in this crappy world that these politicians have all you know colluded to bring us to. So anyways, trying not to go political here, trying to stay a, apolitical as possible during this video. It's not easy for me though, let me tell you. I got a lot of things to say about it. So number 10, the last one, this is a really important one. And I could make a whole standalone video about this. Maybe I will in the future. It's gray man philosophy. You know, you need to be able to become the gray man or the gray woman, right? You need to not stand out. You need to be able to hide in plain sight. So if SHTF happens and like you 
uh, are going to a meeting or something of your neighborhood, you don't know any of these people, it probably wouldn't be a good idea to show up in all of your kit, you know, all of your military gear, you know, you're, <laughs> you're bringing everything with you like Rambo, right? It probably wouldn't be a good idea to show up like that, okay? In any circumstance. I see all these guys that they're all into the gear and stuff, and I get it, I'm into gear too. It's great to have, you know, a way to carry, you know, 12 magazines on your chest and stuff like that, but there's a time and a place for that stuff. And you certainly don't want to blow your cover and let everyone know that you're, you're armed up like Rambo down there before you need to let them know, right? It's something that information is going to be critical. Uh, having the jump on people it's only going to be possible if they don't know exactly what you have back there. So keep your stuff to yourself. Be the gray man. When you go out into any any other setting, like to go trade or anything like that, after SHTF happens, you need to make sure and like tone everything down. And that includes your house as well. So one of the ways to keep yourself from, from being a target in the first place is not have the nicest, fanciest looking house with all these, you know, expensive things outside of your house. You know, if you got a Harley Davidson or a Corvette or a Ferrari or something like that, you need to keep that thing behind a garage door where no one can see it. This stuff can help you right now even uh, to keep your things, keep, th keep theft at bay. Because right now, as we know, people are going around stealing catalytic converters and, and all this stuff, you know, copper wires out of walls. The meth heads like to do that. They'll go into a, a brand new construction house and steal all the copper wires and things like that. Uh, so your house is going to be really important too to have this apply this gray man philosophy. At least that's my thoughts on it. So guys, let me know. Did I miss anything? I limited this to ten. Uh, I could have went on for about another four or five more, uh, but I cut all the other ones out that weren't super critical to your survival in the future. I think all of this stuff is critical to your survival. Let me know down in the comments if you have any other suggestions for newer preppers that are getting into this stuff or even people like me that have been doing it for years that maybe just haven't thought of this certain aspect of things. Uh, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we're in for really, really bumpy times ahead. At least that's my prediction. I stand for liberty. I hope you do too. We'll see you next time.